It turns out that common sense should be employed when visiting Icelandic volcanic eruptions, or I suppose volcanic eruptions of any kind. Or go further and you would uh, come out medium rare. So you would just, and it was, you would be slowly cooked to death. I'm going to contribute less of the talking on this episode and instead offer up some expertise from Brando, an Icelandic friend of mine who project manages within Iceland's search and rescue teams. Volcanoes erupt every few years in Iceland, but last year, 2021, saw what became known as the tourist volcano. Being just a few miles from a main road, both Icelanders and visitors, as and when COVID allowed, flocked to see it. This was far from ideal. The first days of the of the uh, ongoing eruption, uh, March 19 to to, to March uh, 21st, uh, we had uh, you know it was just uh, uh, unbelievable chaos, and we had people you know they were just popping up everywhere, uh, and and um, what well, we we had had uh, there the, there was like a period before the eruption uh, with uh, seismic activity, and we had plans so that we had. Uh, you know, we should have access via car, you know, so that we should direct people to go this direction, so that we knew that uh, we would have uh, a lot of tourism uh, and, and a lot of, you know, locals coming in, and because Icelanders are, are uh, you know, uh, they, say, on they say it's a tourist volcano, but the Icelanders still want to go as well, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Challenges we, we were facing in the first days of the, of the uh, volcano, we were actually quite thankful for having COVID because you can imagine the, the mess we would have had if we would have had you know, the full-blown tourism with everybody going there. Now, today, um, we have about 255,000 tourists that, that have been you know, walking through the, the counting mechanism in, in, uh, around the eruption, but we know that it's probably about 10 to 20% more because people have been pouring in all over, you know, so they don't go with the... the uh, they, 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 they don't, they don't um, not, not everybody goes, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, planned path through the, through the car parks. The, the park. I miss the spectacular early weeks when snow still covered the ground. And when I visited for the final time, the lava flows were calm, or so they seemed. This particular eruption is now deemed to have ended. But before long, there will be another, perhaps nearby, perhaps in a more remote part of the island. The lessons for those wanting a first-hand volcano experience remain the same. And if the owners see people clambering on top of the hot lava, like I saw a couple of days ago, I, I heard from a taxi driver, it may not be true, that you, as, as I saw teams, are now saying that if someone gets into difficulty whilst climbing on the lava, then for your safety, you can't go and help them because uh, the, the, the temperature within must still be very high. Yeah, the thing, the, the, there are uh, three types of danger with, with, uh, with uh, lava that, that has solidified solidified. So uh, first risk is that uh, the, 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 the lava is being degassed. So that there's a emission of, of uh, sulfur dioxide and, and carbon monoxide and, and, um, and uh, carbon dioxide. So these three things are, are something that you don't want to breathe a lot uh, you know, of. Uh, and and uh, you know, that, that reason alone is, is reason not to you know, walk into the you know, lava fields. Um, second risk is, is, you know, just the sheer temperature because there's a lot of heat emission coming from the lava. Uh, but that, that's short term because it really um, lava, when it uh, solidifies, solidifies, it creates a, a insulation on, on top and that can be a very thin crust. Um, and um, uh, we haven't had any fatalities today, uh, but we've had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Darwin Awards uh, runner-ups, uh, you know, wannabes. So we're talking burns or people falling well, off? Or no, uh, but there, uh, I don't think we have had any accidents, but uh, we've had people that, that have uh, had their souls melted off, uh, you know, so they're in extreme temperatures. Uh, but, but still, you know, we're just waiting for the first accident to, to happen. Because what people don't realize is that and that's the third risk. So the, the first risk is, is the gas, the second risk is the temperature. So if you go into a big field, uh, you know, you might make it to the first 100 meters, uh, but then you would, uh, you know, turn around or, or go further and you would uh, come out medium rare. So you would just, and it was, you would be slowly cooked to death. Third risk uh, is uh, sudden change in, in, uh, in the dynamics in the, in the lava. And I've seen this by, with my own eyes. 
so that uh, you have something that seems to be solid, it seems to be completely, you know, uh, you know, th there's nothing happening, but under that thin crust there is lava, and lava can travel miles, uh, very fast and very hot. So, so it, it cools very little. And we have videos uh, that, that show people uh, suddenly running away from lava that just spurts out. And, and lava can actually reach uh, you know, speeds that, that, that even Usain Bolt can't you know, cope with. So if you're chubby and, and, uh, and you know, out of shape, you're not going to be able to you know, run away anyway. So, but and because the, volcano is so, because the volcano is so close to the road, it does mean that almost anyone can, can, can get access. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and the lava uh, is being transported by, by underground or under lava tunnels. And, and really there's pressure. You can hear the, the lava advance and there's crackling noises. So if you hear crackling noises, uh, you, you might expect the, the lava to either spurt out as, as uh, you know, uh, breakouts or what is even worse, you might be you know, walking into a, a field uh, and suddenly everything around you just uh, you know, becomes liquid lava. And, and we, we have videos of, of this happening and, and we, we've, you know, we have video of, of people standing very close to this and suddenly something that's black and you know, it looks like a black rock just suddenly turns red and is just 1240 degrees warm or hot. Uh, and that's the, the, the third risk. But these are low risk, high impact, uh, so low frequency, high impact uh, scenarios. Uh, so that uh, it doesn't happen very often, but going onto the lava is actually a really a ba a ba bad idea unless you're a you know, geologist or geophysicist and, and know your business. And you have understood that, for instance, one tongue of, uh, of lava is completely solidified now. Um, which I, I imagine won't happen for, for weeks or months because uh, there's, there's so much still happening in the, in the volcano. And, and, the, and the policy is, if somebody goes there, and even if he, he goes into, you know, uh, you know, only gets burnt and could be carried away, we're not going to go there. Simple as that. Because we understand the risk. ISA, a world-renowned volunteer search and rescue association, have long since come up with strategies to solve the two main problems accidents happening in the first place, and then how to avoid them becoming tragedies. A massive growth in people visiting Iceland over the past two decades, including those venturing far from towns and villages, forced ISAR to adapt. You know, try to foresee what could go wrong, you know, what places are dangerous, how could we, you know, mitigate the, the risks. And, and uh, we do that with, you know, information technology. We, 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 uh, we use the internet to, to uh, educate people, you know, coming to Iceland that, that don't have the experience, that, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, there, there are risks that, that, uh, that have, to, have to be mitigated. Um, but really, um, the, we, we foresaw that there would be a, like an increase in, in tourism. Uh, and, and, uh, and founded uh, around, I think it was 2006, uh, we founded Safe Travel. And Safe Travel is a program that, that uh, is you know, run by, by ISAR, but it's like a collective thing where the government pitches in and, and the tourism uh, board um, you know, is, is providing uh, you know, expertise and, 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 and money. Um, and, and really the, the, the objective there is to, to educate the tourists and, and, and you know, have programs to, to um, uh, prevent uh, people getting into trouble. Uh, well, basically, uh, we, we have 93 teams uh, all over the country, and uh, we, ha we have a, a, a call-out force of about uh, 4,200 uh, members. Uh, in addition to that, we have about uh, 1,800 people that, that are in the youth divisions, accident prevention, and, and then you know, members that, that are no longer active uh, or, or maybe on a, on a sabbatical from, from, uh, from, um, from search and rescue, so that we, we have uh, ample resources. Uh, but the problem is that uh, we we, um, uh, we get uh, these these uh, surges. So now we have a surge in, in the you know the, the volcano uh, in, in the Reykjanes Peninsula, uh, and we're dealing with that. So that uh, there's a there's a lot of load workload on, on, on the on the teams. I'll be releasing a much more in-depth Iceland short film in the near future, with more from Brando and other experts from around Iceland and the obligatory natural world wonderment from an outrageously extraordinary country. So you can look forward to that. Until then, buy my books please, and preferably read them as well. Bye.